Water is an essential building block of life and it has suffered a problem that consumerism has been trying to solve for decades. It has no flavor. While popular water flavor enhancers have been coming in and out of fashion for years, a new water bottle is on the scene to solve this not so age old problem. While it seems like magic, it is a lot more of a gimmick. The Air Up water bottle smells a little too good to be true. Now we are going to be in some delicate territory here with this video because chances are if you know of this water bottle already, it's because you saw it as a sponsored product on other YouTubers' videos. They don't allow the British Army to have water bottles. They should try air up. Now we aren't here to start any beef because like many of you, we like the creators that we know are using and promoting this product. Problem is, it's stupid. So we're going to be getting into the influencer marketing side of this company later. But for those of you who don't know what the hell is going on, the Air Up water bottle is a water bottle that flavors the water through air. Natural flavors are transported through your mouth to your nose and vice versa, and that's why when your nose is stuffed up, things don't taste very good. The idea is also backed by neuroscience. Basically smelling the flavor while you are drinking plain water tricks your brain into thinking that you are drinking flavored water. It's honestly kind of nifty. It's a, it's a sick idea. You get the health benefits of drinking fresh water. You're staying hydrated, but you're enjoying something that tastes a little more fun than just standard water. And the thing is, AirUp seems to be gaining traction, partly because it's piggybacking on a couple of recent trends that we've seen a lot of lately, particularly the popularity of trendy bottles like the Stanley Tumbler, which we have made a whole video about that phenomenon as well, if you wanna check out that. We've also made a video about sparkling water and the rise of flavored waters in general, which would be a good precursor to this video as well, if you wanna see that too. But back to the Air Up bottle. The company pitch here is that the Air Up water bottle is an eco-friendly alternative to buying beverages from the store, like grabbing a can of soda or a bottle of water to stay hydrated. However, the bottle's design requires single-use plastic ring-shaped flavor pods that contain the scent. You buy a packet of the pods, you pop one into the top of the bottle, and then boom, you're sniff drinking your way to Flavor Town, as the kids say. Do kids say that? Flavor Town? Is that, that might be a dated reference. And now look, honestly, if these things worked really well, it would be harder for us to dunk on them in this video. But the reviews of the Air Up water bottle range from people loving the flavor to claiming that it has a plastically or perfumey taste. No. Well. <laughs> One review in Wired Magazine bluntly stated that you can easily recreate the Air Up experience by sipping some water while huffing a lemon scented Glade plug-in, which sounds horrendous. And honestly, the part of this that really puts this thing on the hell no list for me is the price. A pack of three pods costs eight to $13 and that's only gonna last you 10 days. All right, listen. I'm, I know you're probably thinking, geez, we're, uh, we're not even halfway into this video and we've already kind of poked holes in most of the arguments for this company. So why are people buying this thing? To give you some background on the AirUp product company situation, it was created by two German university students, Lena Jungst and Tim Jager, for their final project. That prototype was the first model of the AirUp water bottle. They decided to make it an actual business, and by 2019, the water bottle started gaining traction in the German market. Since then, the AirUp has seen impressive growth, with these bottles being sold all over the world now. Except here in Canada, apparently, we cannot seem to buy an Air Up water bottle, which is part of the reason why we're not showing you the water bottle right now. Now, according to their website, you can see that the company was created to nudge people into a healthier and more sustainable consumption behavior pattern. It seems like at least a part of their success comes from their focus on sustainability and environmentally friendly practices, such as using recyclable materials in their products and partnering with environmental causes. And honestly, nowadays buying shit is so complicated. I understand that for most consumers, you're just trying to buy something that's not gonna hurt someone. Or, or something in nature, you know? But sadly, the Air Up is pretty clearly just marketing. The main argument here is that the Air Up uses 
the fact that the Arab pods use 88% less plastic than pre-filled and single-use drink containers. And 88% less is a lot of a percent less, right? Kind of. One flavor packet of these three pods only lasts just over a week. So using the air up on the regular means that you're using three a month, maybe, or four if you're thirsty. But the volume of the waste created isn't really the problem here. It's how these pods are designed. The pods have only one purpose, which is to be used exclusively with the air up water bottle. And here is where you might start cluing in to where we're going with this. We have made multiple videos about coffee pods, which dives into this exact same phenomenon, just in a different kind of flavor. AirUp copied the Keurig business model exactly. Basically, the idea is you sell a product for relatively cheap, which relies on refills, which are proprietary to that new nifty device. This is often called the razor blade business model, and it's really good for the people selling the product to make a bunch of money, but it's not particularly great for the people buying it or the environment that is required to make the product possible in the first place. This means really consistent business for them and the ability for them to set prices higher than would be otherwise reasonable. To distract from this fact, these companies have to be constantly innovating their product to make consumers feel all right about buying their stuff from them over and over again. Arup has already launched their Gen 2 bottle, which is made with 50% recycled materials using Triton Renew technology, which is a BPA-free plastic material. They they proudly say that the pods that they're using and the plastic casings that they come from are made from recycled materials. But their recyclability is probably going to vary a lot based on where you live. The pods don't even have the recycling triangle on them, so for the most part, these things are actually just trash. But here's the real kicker here. Just as coffee pod Keurig owners still end up purchasing to-go coffees from places like Starbucks and other chains, Air up bottle owners are probably still going to be buying other drinks in other ways. So while they're advertising as a reduction, that reduction is completely dependent on the user completely replacing one product with this new product, which sadly doesn't usually happen. And while the Arab tries to offset their impact while doing things like joining a global health campaign, shipping their plastic pods and cardboard packaging, and using renewable energy resources in their production facilities, it doesn't offset the fact that their entire business model is designed to sell a product that is completely unnecessary. No matter how environmentally friendly Arup claims to be, the bottle can only function with a single-use plastic pod that you can only buy from them. And we've seen this process unfold in the coffee pod industry as well. Pods go from plastic to aluminum, from aluminum to compostable, and so on and so forth. But no matter the material or the disposal method, these products are still redundant and previously unnecessary. But okay, let's devil's advocate for a minute. For the minority of people who cannot manage to hydrate themselves effectively. Ugh. Brother, ugh. And find that this air smell bottle is the only way that they truly enjoy getting themselves hydrated, that might be a win. But calling themselves a sustainability leader because they invented overly complicated water is kind of a weird way to go. But at this point, you're like, Levi, nobody gives a shit about the planet. People are buying this bottle because it's cool. And I would say, you're right, actually. Should I, should I just give you the, the microphone and you, you, could just, you could just take over if you want. The honest truth is that the Arup product is kind of awesome. And it takes a lot of key boxes when it comes to getting people to buy stuff impulsively. First off, the innovative technology is a really cool idea. It's an easy pitch to someone to be like, hey, this is this crazy water bottle that flavors the water through smell, right? That's like immediately intriguing and it makes people want to try it. Combine this with a unique look and a fun tactile sensory experience, it makes it perfect for viral unboxing videos online. This product was basically built with internet distribution at the center of its plan. And that's probably why you're here. Chances are, if you've seen this thing, it's 
been on your newsfeed or in the hands of a creator that you already follow because Era has been using influencer marketing to establish a very strong brand presence across various social media platforms since their launch. They have formed collaborations with mega influencers like Jojo Siwa, Danny Gonzalez, and the Try Guys, just to name a few. This ensured widespread visibility and immediate brand awareness. Now, influencer marketing is not a new idea, but this product has done really, really well in this format. Beyond their paid integrations they have with these creators, Gen Zs have jumped on board the bandwagon and been posting organically about this new cool water bottle that they now have. And here's like a little inside look into the world of influencer marketing from a influencer who has done some marketing. I have to say that the AirUp water bottle is kind of a perfect product partnership in a lot of ways. The product itself is interesting. So you don't have to manufacture any kind of false enthusiasm for a product that isn't really that cool. Just a clip of a creator trying out this crazy water bottle and reacting on camera is enough for an ad spot because it's a novel experience that the creator and the audience can have together. In an internet world where people are constantly aware that they're being sold something from every angle, the way that an advertisement is introduced to an audience is really important. As much as possible, creators want the ad to feel like it's just another part of the video. So it's entertaining, but also it has to be a product that their audience might actually be interested in buying. For example, here at Future Proof, we're very careful about the sponsors that we take on because as a channel that talks about and critiques consumerism, our audience is probably some of the most critical and engaged people when it comes to these kinds of advertisements. And in a lot of ways, that means that we've done our job, which is kind of awesome, but it has limited what we have had to do and what kind of brand sponsorships we've had to take. So we run very limited sponsorships and we rely on Patreon and the odd sticker drop to support our videos. But the honest truth is we would have made a lot more money if we had just been sponsored by AirUp. But here's the thing, the AirUp water bottle will cost cost you more than a monthly streaming service to maintain, it will create a bunch of unnecessary trash and probably fade into obscurity over the next couple of years when the next water bottle trend hits. And that probably wouldn't go over very well on this channel. And the worst part of this story maybe is that there have been lots of sugar-free sustainable ways of flavoring your water for like a millennia, so um, maybe consider some of those. So at the end of the day, the air up is just tricking your brain into thinking that you're tasting something that you're really just smelling. And it's also tricking you into opening up your wallet and buying something that you just don't need. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you liked it, remember to subscribe and we will see you next week for another upload.